Sounds great. All right, let's do it. Um, so thank you guys for coming. This is our second uh, Zoominar, we're calling it. It's a monthly Zoom that we're doing with Riverwatch volunteers and anyone who else wants to join. Um, we started it last month uh, with no guests, just kind of a, a trial run. And I think today will be similar. Um, we're just seeing how these go, how these go and um, we'll go from there. But I guess to start off, um, we'll do some brief introductions of the Riverwatch staff. And then last, we'll, we'll give it to Anna, who is our wonderful intern. Um, and she's gonna present to you guys kind of what she's been doing um, and a little presentation to go along with that. Um, so I'm Bradley. I am the uh, community outreach coordinator. I've been with Riverwatch for two years and I kind of do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, a lot of sample processing, um, help with a bunch of different things. And I work for the river science part of the program. And Megan is a program manager for the parks and wildlife side. And then Michaela is the program manager for the river science side. So you guys can introduce yourselves if you'd like. Hi, I'm Michaela. I think I know almost everybody on this call. Um, I've been with Riverwatch for almost 20, 21 years. I've lost track. So I've been here a while. I hopefully by now I somewhat know what I'm doing. Welcome everybody. Yeah, and I'm Megan McConville and have been working with Colorado Parks and Wildlife in the River Watch program for a year plus. Um, it's a really great place to work, even in the middle of a pandemic when I don't get to see all my amazing colleagues all the time. But really happy to have so many CPW colleagues join this call. One, because you guys do so much work to help us secure amazing interns like Anna. And I really appreciate all the work you do to make this possible. Um, and so the person behind all this paperwork and us saying, can you please help us get her EDSYS or whatever it is set up? We really, really appreciate everything that you do. And this program is really valuable to us. Um, and Anna's gonna share a little bit of that later today. Um, and then for us, the Riverwatch volunteers, we just love seeing you guys and we wish we could see you in person. And this is the, the next best thing for the time being. Um, but this forum is for you. If you have questions or concerns about the program, we wanna make sure we make space for you to, to ask those questions. And mixed into today, we'll have some Jeopardy questions to mix it up and have some fun. Uh, learn a few things about Riverwatch, um, but we're all really happy to have you here. Anna, you're next. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Anna. So I'm new here. I started with the Riverwatch program um, back in July of 2020, and this is my last week here. Yeah, and um, like Megan said, we can open it up maybe after Anna presents. Um, to Riverwatch folk or, or anyone if they want to introduce themselves, if they have questions. Um, and like Megan said as well, we're going to kind of hop in with some Jeopardy questions, kind of make it a little bit interactive to kind of break up the monotony of it. Um, so I, th I think we should fire one of those off, uh, Megan. And the Jeopardy question is going to be, dun, 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 dun. when was the first year of Riverwatch? Oh. So it'll be multiple choice. We ask you to to choose if you see that pop up. Everyone get a chance to answer. What do we got, Megan? Look at this crew. Nice. Yeah, so th over 30 years um, and a lot of the work we're doing has kind of shifted to, we, uh, we, we're still calling it the 30 year celebration, um, even though it's technically, we're going on 32 now, um, but we're still calling it 30. It's a reason for us to celebrate. There's a couple of fundraising goals we're gonna try to achieve within that 30 year celebration um, and kind of some, some fun uh, virtual events we're gonna try to launch. Um, and I think 
we should hop into Anna's presentation and then maybe we can, after that, we can talk about some other River Watch updates that we might have um, and we can kind of open it up to the group. But Anna, if you're, if you're ready to go, I think that would be a good time. Yeah, I'm ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with everyone. Can everyone see this okay? Maybe a good head yes or no. Yes. Awesome, okay, so I don't have to freak out right now. That's great. Um, but <laughs> welcome everyone, thank you. L love to see some new faces um, just because I haven't got to see any of you within the past internship or the past six months I was with CPW and Riverwatch. So welcome and I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, so yeah, this is just gonna be my presentation and my perspectives on the 2020 youth internship program through CPW. Um, and I was super grateful to have this opportunity to be here today to present to you all. So just an overview of what Colorado Parks Park and Wildlife's youth internship program entails is it's sponsored by GOCO um, and it allows new interns and early career professionals to be exposed and knowledgeable about Colorado Parks and Wildlife as an agency and be uh, more knowledgeable about the different components within the agency as well. Um, so it's a six month program. Um, so I've been here since July and this is my last week. And then, um, so it exposes individuals to new skills, mentorship opportunities and networking opportunities as well. So kind of an overarching, how do we get um, early career professionals ready for their careers and be set up and be exposed to new perspectives. And to start off with, um, so this is kind of unique in the fact that I got to work with both the River Watch program and the Endstream Flow program. And I believe Katie Birch just joined us. So I'll kind of give an overview of both the River Watch program and the Endstream program. So River Watch is more of the water quality um, aspects of CPW, kind of recruiting community scientists throughout the state of Colorado to ensure water quality data is co collected, apologies, and um, yeah, more of the volunteering aspects in the civic engagement um, and educational component to that. Whereas the in-stream flow is more like the quantification or the amount of water um, within a stream. Um, so I got to work with Katie Birch on her side of the in-stream flow for the past six months. Um, so a lot of that data collection and quantification of the stream that we would go out to collect data on goes back to water rights and water appropriation throughout the state of Colorado. So kind of a really good balance between water quality and water quantity. And so the theme of this um, presentation or the formatting of it, it's gonna be rose, th bud and thorn. Um, so with every single kind of project that I lead or working with individuals at every single event, um, I like to do a reflection and this is called rose, rose bud and thorn. Rose is the more beautiful part of whatever service project or event that was. Um, the bud is like the growth or the potential or learning opportunities that we all had within this experience. And the thorn is something that could have been approved upon or a challenge. And so this is just gonna be the setup in the format of the rest of this presentation. So first off is the rose. Um, the rose again is the beautiful part of the occasion or the event. Um, so the rose, there were a lot, many more roses than I could possibly put down or had enough time to talk about within this 15 minute time period. So for me, the rose in itself was just like the new skills, new skills I got to learn within the past six months. So a lot of it went back to the data analysis and helping out um, with Barb and Megan on the watershed reports. Um, so we'll talk about the macroinvertebrates in a little bit. And then working with Katie on the in-stream flow and learning more about water rights in Colorado and how difficult and unique it is to the state of Colorado. Um, I worked in Oregon for the past six years. And so being exposed to an entirely new set of laws was new to me, but that was just a great opportunity experience overall. Um, and then habitat assessments. So the R2 process that Katie and I got to work on a little bit more. That, that was a new procedure that I got to put on my resume and um, ask her a lot of questions about. And then working with Michaela, Barb, Bradley, and Megan with education outreach through the Riverwatch program for volunteers and also with the program. Um, and then for me, the best part overall was just connecting with the people and the mentorship I got to get out of 
everyone that I worked with, um, even though it was remote for the past six months, the mentorship was just like through the roof, connected with so many wonderful and great people. Um, Lori Harvey is not here today, but she has been a volunteer with River Watch for the past 12 years, and she is a high school teacher with Monta Vista High School, and kind of getting to talk to her and Barb Horn, um, and just kind of getting more perspectives about being a volunteer within River Watch and how um, each component and each people within the community and the state of Oregon makes a really big impact to what we do as an agency. So that was just really awesome to see overall. And so going back to the skills that I got to learn and utilize within the past six months, um, this is kind of a macro invertebrate guide that I've been working on and will be finalized. And this will be available for you all um, in March to download and kind of take out with you on the rivers or use in a classroom setting as well. So this will be a macro invertebrate identification guide geared towards like middle school students to adult level um, students. And it's really awesome to learn about how macroinvertebrate kind of goes back into the water quality aspect of things. And so um, I would love to zoom into this. I don't think that's possible on a PowerPoint, but here, if you can see my arrow of this circle, it's just the life history of different types of macroinvertebrates um, and then including a glossary as well. So if you have some exposure or want more exposure, this is just a great tool to use and look forward to in March. And then up next is the Riverwatch Art Show that Riverwatch will be putting on starting this month. Um, I know Bradley just talked about it a little bit, but this is the 30th year anniversary and celebration for Riverwatch. And so I kind of created this art show um, as a fundraising opportunity and an opportunity for more volunteers in the state of Colorado to kind of showcase their skills and be involved as well. And the theme of this year is called Carved Over Time reflecting on how rivers make a lasting impact on the community and environment over time. So diving deeper into how individuals and volunteers and stakeholders um, and community organizations do have a really big impact within a watershed basin and within one river. So kind of a ripple effect and a really awesome opportunity for folks to take that time to reflect and then also share their interpretation of what that means to them to be part of this community and to give back in any way possible. So I would love for you all to kind of look into this more and share the word. And if you want, there are going to be opportunities for you to get involved as a judge, if that is of any interest to you. But you can look forward to having these flyers posted around CPW and emailed out to you pretty soon. And then the bud part. So a reminder is just this growth or potential and opportunity. Um, throughout my six months with CPW and Riverwatch, I had expanded my network tremendously. So coming from a place and being new to the state of Colorado and to the agency, just being exposed to different personnel and biologists while working with Katie and Megan. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to have new connections with folks that I can reach out to later down on the road when it's safe again and kind of meet up and do some volunteer work and be out in the field. Um, and then a more definitive career path. So personally for me, I have a fisheries biology background, but also an environmental education background. And for a while now, I've been looking into how can I melt two worlds together and this internship completely gave me a new perspective of that is an opportunity to look forward to in the future and kind of having the best of both worlds. And so that was a huge bud and within the past six months of saying like, this is possible, um, kind of put here like quote, like finally, even though it's rare, it's kind of um, a bright light that I found within the past six months. And some really fun pictures I included here that were my favorite events. So this is Katie Burt, she's in the room right now. Um, this was the in-stream flow and this was taken on the Cow Creek, which is located on Uncompagre, which is in the southwestern corner of Colorado. And we were out there and I remember it was like scorching hot. You can see like absolutely no shade coverage, but she was incredibly patient with the process and talking me through the procedure and just spent, we just spent all day out there kind of just being incredibly detailed and nitpicky about this one stream section. And we saw a bunch of animals 
And it was just a memorable moment, even though it was incredibly hard to be out there in the scorching heat and um, learning a new procedure and asking these questions. It was just an awesome moment. And I was super grateful to be there with Katie and have her as a mentor. And then this is a really awesome like garter snake um, kind of swallowing a trout that I found on Crowd Creek. So, which was really cool because oftentimes you see all these wildlife and you get to slow down a little bit and see them a little bit better. And macroinvertebrate sampling. So going back to that macroinvertebrate guide I showed you all in the previous slides, um, I had to go out and learn how to do some macroinvertebrate sampling on my own due to COVID. But that just gave me some opportunities to explore more creeks around Colorado and also how to learn about macroinvertebrates while incorporating all these informations on one spreadsheet for everyone. So learning myself while kind of teaching you all, which is a great opportunity. And then Fort Collins with Megan. So seeing from like A to D on where does all the where do all the samples go and being in Fort Collins with Megan and processing samples with her kind of just fit the puzzle piece all together of saying like, okay, now this is where all the data analysis go and this is where we're, the data is being processed. Um, so that was an awesome opportunity. And I like made a joke to her recently of saying like, I always joked in college that I would never use my college or my chemistry skills at all. And I was able to get past that for the past six years until this internship. And she threw me in the lab with this like really long procedure of how to make a reagent and it had some like calf bovine skin cells and I didn't know what I was touching, um, but it, it worked. You do need chemistry. So I'm gonna tell my students and remember that from now on. <laughs> and then the thorn of this, um, right? So it was really hard to kind of sit down and do some reflection of like what could have been better about the internship because like regardless of what could have improved, um, I think that there would have not been a better group to be with within the past six months during a global pandemic and moving to an entirely new state and starting a new career. And so Bradley, Michaela, Barb's not here, but Megan's here, Katie, I can't thank you enough for being the great mentors that you were and being great like crew members and team members because like the remote work could have been better, right? Cause we would have loved to be in person and see each other. But for the time being like you just all included me in this community. And also I felt just accepted right from the beginning. Um, it was incredibly short. So for those of you who are in this program, maybe extend it a little bit longer because if I could stay for like another year or two, I would totally do that. <laughs> um, but that's out of your control, right? <laughs> And um, last but not least, it's BIPOC um, representation. So for folks who don't know what BIPOC means, it stands for Black, Indigenous, or People of Color representation. I would love to see more of that. Um, as a person, of, of, as a woman of color myself, I didn't actually start camping until five years ago in 2016. And now I visited 20 out of 62 national parks throughout the United States and have multiple opportunities to be out on the field and travel to many states for work. And so kind of realizing like the more representation or opportunities you can open up to early career professionals and students that can make a lot of difference. So keep that in mind for the future. And so what's next for folks, for those who are wondering, um, I recently just started a new job through the Multnomah Education Service District, which is located in Portland, Oregon. Um, as an outdoor school science educator. So I'll be working full time um, educating students every single day remotely um, about science and ecology. So pretty scared, but also nervous. And I know I'm meeting you all, most of you all for the first time, but if you are, are interested in staying connected, here are my social media and my email, and then some other opportunities um, you should check out if you're interested in listening to more about my professional talks. Um, so a podcast that I was featured on recently with Awkward Angler, it's with Erica Nelson and she is located in um, Crested Butte in Colorado. And she does a lot of efforts with DEI as a consultant and then with the Montana Wildlife Federation where I got to be on a panel with a couple of other folks. So yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity and I'll take any questions if you have any.
Et du coup, ça sent le scrap. <rire> Thanks, Anna, for your presentation. Great job, Anna. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Anna? Give her some tough ones. No? OK. Well, thank you, Anna. I mean, you've, you've been such a joy to be around. Um, you, you've brought just such a fresh perspective I think, especially to the Riverwatch side of things. And I was lucky enough to go out with you and Katie the one time um, and kind of do some of the in, in stream flow. And it was a lot of fun. Um, I think everyone who was able to work with you um, can say the same thing that that you have bright things ahead and you're, you're a natural leader and appreciate all the work you've done for sure. Thanks, Bradley. I'm surprised I didn't cry this presentation because I cried yesterday at the practice. So <laughs> you did great. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're good at these things. You've done them plenty of times. I've seen it. So <laughs> yes, and we'll be we'll be featuring obviously some of the stuff that Anna was talking about, like the art show, the bug guide. Those those will be kind of rolling out in the future, and we'll be making sure to post those on Facebook, Instagram, um, website, and newsletters. Um, so be on the lookout for those. Um, Megan, did you have anything to add? No, I, I mean, I, if if folks from CPW want to stick around and just tell us uh, your favorite river and kind of your role, it's nice to connect. And some of the beauty of Zoom is like, there you are with your name right under you. Like, I kind of wish everybody wore name tags when I was new. Um, so there is that advantage, but maybe just you know, your, your role and um, if you were to sample a river, which one that might be because you either love it in Colorado and then for our volunteers, where you sample for River Watch, it would be great to just kind of get a perspective on, on who's here. And um, again, thanks for your time. And if you need to go, we totally understand. Um, so Bradley will call on people. I would like to start with uh, Rob. If you wouldn't mind, Rob. Let's see, so it's favorite river and what was the other thing? Introduce who you are and your involvement or connection to Riverwatch. Okay, um, so let's see. Uh, well, I'm Rob Harris. I'm the water resources section manager. Um, Riverwatch is one of the programs that's uh, in the water section, but we also do water rights for the, uh, for parks and for uh, the in-stream flow program. We see Katie Birch. She's also in the water section. Um, and uh, water quality too. That's another big part of our work. Um, so, and let's see then, um, favorite river, uh, you know, I mean, you kind of have to go with what you grew up with. So I would say Bear Creek and Boulder County. Nice. How about um, Katie, Katie Birch? Thanks, Bradley, and hi, everyone. If you don't know me, I'm Katie. I'm the in-stream flow program coordinator who had the wonderful privilege to get to co-mentor Anna with Megan. And I'll just echo how grateful I am to you, Anna, for all your hard work under really challenging circumstances. Um, we had a lot of fun, and I totally agree with Bradley that just being around you is delightful. And it was a really fun summer amidst some challenges. Um, so in that vein, uh, my favorite river of the moment right now is Cow Creek that Anna showed you pictures of. And although there's not a ton of shade, um, it's a really interesting river and there's some cool, uh, not yet threatened or endangered species. We found bluehead sucker in there last summer. And um, yeah, my connection to River Watch is kind of from a distance. Um, through the section and through uh, working with Barb and Megan and some other folks, but I'm just eternally grateful for the education it provides because I can relate being a young student, um, super inspired by being out and experiencing a river at a young age. And I think it's just a very important mission. So it's cool to have gotten to see it through a closer lens through getting to work with Megan and Anna and this internship. Great, thank you. How about um, Patrick? 
Right. Um, not really aquatics. I'm uh, the DNR trainer and employee development manager. However, uh, most of you know, I work for the uh, Missouri Conservation Department at Jefferson County Open Space. So uh, my experience with aquatics has actually been with amphibian research uh, in Jefferson County. Um, so I did forestry and then amphibian research on that. But my favorite river is Piadra down around, uh, what is that, uh, Pagosa down in that area. And one of my goals as I get um, closer to retirement is to get back into field work with CPW. And uh, Piadra River is one of my favorites, not only is it just a great watershed, but there's hot springs. Uh, so if I had been out with you guys, uh, we would have made <laughs> mandatory lunchtime stops at the hot spring. Uh, but a fabulous uh, presentation, Anna. I love to keep up on what's going on because again, I plan on coming back into the parks and wildlife fold, hopefully uh, in a few years towards the end of my career, uh, mostly in wildlife and forestry, but aquatics has always been a, a very interesting area. So I really appreciate the presentation. Look forward to hearing more and always like to hear what you guys are doing. Thank you. How about uh, Shalana? And sorry if I said that wrong. Totally okay. Uh, Shalana. Shalana. I, I get Shalana all the time. Um, yeah, I'm Shalana. I am the CPW Workforce Development and ADA Coordinator. I just started this role a week ago, um, but part of my job is going to be managing the internship program, so it's really exciting. I actually started with CPW as an intern many years ago, so it's, Anna, I loved your presentation. I loved seeing your experiences. Um, it's a great program. It changed my life and I hope it changes yours. Um, and my favorite river, Patrick actually helped me think of what my favorite is. Um, it's probably a section of, of a certain section of Coal Creek near Boulder um, because I used to survey that area a lot and the young of your leopard frogs use it as a movement corridor. So there's just like young leopard frogs all over the place. And there's also an elk herd that lives there. Cool. cool. Thank you. And I should know how to say your name. I've met you before, so apologies. <laughs> um, Don't worry about it. How about uh, Karen? Hi, um, I'm Karen Farrell. This is my husband, Cody. Uh, we're volunteers out here in the North Fork Valley. Um, so uh, we work with the uh, River Watch that's part of the Western Slope Conservation Center. And uh, we've been doing it, I guess, a year and a half now. So yeah, and my favorite river would be uh, Gunnison River. And, and my favorite river being from the Front Range originally is the Poudre River. Great. Thank you. Uh, how about Cheeto? Hello everyone, Chito. Um, so organizational development coordinator for the state. Um, yeah, started off as warden, did angler ed, other stuff, but so always kind of been tied around water, it seems like in one way or another. And uh, by far, hands down, easiest one um, is Gunnison River for me, specifically the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Um, just absolutely fabulous place. Uh, cut my teeth learning how to fly fish there. Used to spend time there with my dad when we were little. So just, just it's like, you know, it's that's my power spot right there. That's where we go. We need to recharge. So, yeah, that's what it is. Great. How about uh, Nanette? Nanette is a, a recent Riverwatch volunteer. She participated in our last training that we had in March. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Nanette. Yeah, I think um, we were really fortunate to have our training program right before the world came to an end with COVID. And yeah, I'm pretty new. I just um, participate in the program and I'm the education director at Betty Ford Alpine Gardens. Um, I was originally a geologist and uh, you know I've taken some stream ecology classes. And so this is my chance to actually get out on the river that flows right through our gardens. It's really fantastic. It's right in the town of Vail. Um, the town of Vail actually has a restore the gore program and Pete Wadden that works for the town 
actually samples, I think, five locations in along Gore Creek, which runs through um, our gardens. But I have the opportunity of being able to present data to the public. So this summer, and now that I've got almost a whole year's worth of data, I plan on plotting it all out and putting it on a big board somewhere near the creek so the public can actually see what's going on in the creek, explain what all of those values that we collect really mean. And um, so I'm very excited about this summer coming up. Uh, we do have to tell you, I did sample um, Monday of this week. <laughs> Bradley just got my samples and the water was zero degrees. So <laughs> as soon as I got out of the water, it all froze all over me. That was kind of exciting. But I do remember when we took our class that the river actually measured, or that creek that we went into there measured minus two, <laughs> even though the water was flowing. <laughs> So anyway, I'm looking forward to the summer when the water gets warmer too. <laughs> yeah, isn't that neat how the water can be below freezing but still be moving? It's it's because it's moving, it's not freezing over. Um, yeah. There was a really cool video by uh, Roaring Fork um, Conservancy the other day where there was a, I forget what they call it, but it was like an ice pack um, where the ice builds up and then uh, if it gets a little warmer, it releases and it kind of creates this big wave of ice down the river. Um, Maybe towards the end, I can I can share that on my screen, um, but we'll keep plugging away here. I think uh, Jeff's here, but he he told me he was just kind of sitting in to to hear the presentation. Um, he, I'm, I'm sure he might have a class going right now, but he's he's a teacher at Buena Vista High School and a long time River Watch volunteer. So, um, most guess, number of samples ever, Jeff. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I think the most samples in River Watch history. He holds he holds that title. Pretty sure. How many is that, Michaela? I think he's almost up to 450. 450. One location. So One that's location. the beauty of Riverwatch data. It's that baseline, long term, close to 30 years worth of data at one particular location. And then not to mention the countless number of students that Jeff's inspired and, you know, hopefully not spilled acid on, but, you know, taught about chemistry and water sampling as he goes through things. Yeah, and, and speaking of, you know, the longtime volunteers, one of the things with our 30 year celebration is we're going to be celebrating some of these really long volunteers that have been around for a long time and kind of creating these, these milestone awards and we'll be featuring them on the website and social media. Um, and so that along with, you know, Anna's art show, some of the bug stuff and a few other things is kind of part of our updates that we have. Um, Michaela, do you want to talk about possible training or lack thereof? No, oh, that's a, a taboo word in, in our world right now because of COVID. Yeah. So <laughs> we're still working on it. We're gonna try to get some training videos up online this year in lieu of a, um, a full-blown training and then maybe have a, a training again in October. So um, we're looking forward to it when we can all get together again, but it's not happening right now. And could you talk about the um, social media campaign? What kind of what you shared on Facebook last month, the I Love Riverwatch? Yeah, we had kind of had, um, we have a Riverwatch uh, Facebook page, uh, Riverwatch of Colorado. If you guys go on there, you can notice that we asked all of our volunteers to send us some either little videos or some pictures of them explaining why they love uh, Riverwatch. I just posted uh, Jeff's today from Buena Vista, so his is up there now. And um, it's just kind of cool to see all the different reasons why the people, why our volunteers have stuck around for so long and why they love Riverwatch. So it's not open just to them. It's open to anybody. If you guys are interested in, in sending us a picture to post. Um, so we'll be doing that. We're going to be doing some fundraising campaigns throughout the year. And just we have some, some big plans. Hopefully we can pull it all off for the upcoming year. Megan, did you have any updates? Um, lab updates. Um, Nanette, you're hoping to plot a full year's worth of samples and thank you for doing that. I think it is like that real time here. You've been in the program for, you know, almost a year, which seems incredible um, to me, but, you know, passionate folks like yourselves are uh, inspiring to me. So I'm getting caught up in the lab, um, you know, every day, Michaela tells me how many boxes I have left. 
Um, when we started this year, it was like 37 and we're down to six. So it's been a really productive season um, for me, getting caught up with your metals analyses. And that's really important to me. And the nutrients are going pretty smoothly too. So that's kind of a lab update. We've had a wonderful temporary employee working and helping uh, when I can't be there to continue to run that instrument really effectively. And he's just taken a job with CPW um, as the aquatic biologist in the Salida area. Um, so his name is Alexander Townsend and will continue to help serve, serve water quality in the mission that CPW holds really dear. Um, other updates, Bradley, I think that's, that's what I have at this point. Again, Anna talked about an art show and that's just fun, but it's also a way to maybe act as a fundraising tool for Riverwatch. We really would love for all of our volunteers to be able to collect macroinvertebrate samples. And currently that's not something that we can afford. And so some of this effort is, is geared out, how do we make that a, a component of the program where you know, Karen, you can collect and Nanette, you can collect and we can help to fund some of that analysis. So we really capture a biological component of, of water quality on an annual basis. Um, so again, hopefully folks contribute art. We'd love to hear the stories and Riverwatch is more than just data. It's really about people and connection to place. Um, and so this carved over time is a reflection of our 30 years and uh, kind of an inspiration of, of where we might go from here. Again, that Black Canyon of the Gunnison, Chito is just gonna get deeper. Um, water's magic power and you know, what are the effects that it, that has on us? Um, so uh, please submit or yes, as Riley said, be our judge and help us. Um, you know, curate and, and award these folks that are contributing. Yeah, and, and, you know, with the art show and other things that we're gonna be rolling out in the future, it's, we're trying to think of new and creative ways that we can interact with our volunteers since we're not really able to see them in person all that often. Um, so hopefully these can kind of serve as a, you know, a, a nice face-to-face, -face, virtual face-to-face -face updates for, for folks who are interested. Um, and I think it'll be fun going forward what we can do with these. Um, and if anyone in here now, our goal is to kind of feature, like we featured Anna today, we're, we're going to try to feature people in the field. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be related to water, um, but ideally it would be, but that's something we're going to try to do in the future is, is kind of feature a, a, a guest on each of these and, and see if they wanted to share and present. Um, so if any brave folks wanted to, to volunteer for that, just shoot us an email, talk to us after. Um, but I think we have another Jeopardy question. Oh, what yeah. Do you, what do you think, Megan? You got it dialed up? Yeah, you guys ready? And then Anna's de going to describe what these are afterwards. Okay, what is included in a Riverwatch watershed report? And while you guys are answering that, I just want to let you know that next month when we have this, we've asked Becky Mars from Parks and Wildlife to come on and be our guest speaker for next month. And she's going to explain some information about how um, their program works and how Riverwatch can, um, how the hours that you guys use for Riverwatch for our volunteers can be submitted to the Parks and Wildlife database for, for um, their use also a way for you to earn a free parks pass, but also demonstrate Riverwatch volunteers contribute incredible hours to this program and we are so thankful, but it's a way for us within CPW to also show that influence of, of where folks are kind of regionally, geographically, um, and kind of the influence, but also to thank you for, for some of that time in the way that we can. So free park passes are always nice. Um, you guys are amazing, right? All of the above. Anna, what is a watershed report and um, what does that look like? So a watershed report, I had to write one. I mean, I got to write one, sorry, <laughs> language news. Um, but it encompasses everything within a watershed. And so all the data that volunteers go out to collect, including new nutrients and metals and sometimes macroinvertebrates and temperature, all of that like really good stuff that 
tells a bigger picture about the watershed, goes into this overall report that allows all of us to kind of dig deeper and read and kind of do the storytelling ourselves with just the data. And so it's a really awesome way to understand um, better and more about your watershed, your local watershed, or anything that you're really interested in um, over a time period as well. And so the macroinvertebrate component was just recently added. And so Megan, I guess she talked about this a little earlier about how it's the biological component. Um, and it's kind of like that one missing puzzle piece that we would love to include. Um, and we got to do this past year of macroinvertebrates relating back to water quality and kind of like how does metals and nutrients and temperature affect the macroinvertebrates and in return affects like the fisheries as well. So having that like bigger circle, here's how one is affecting the other. Um, and then the metals and nutrients, Megan, can you dive deeper into that one? Yeah, so again, we've been collecting data in some cases for 20, 25, or even 30 years. Um, and that data is all publicly available as part of our ethos that when volunteers are collecting that data, we make it available to everyone. Um, but also trying to tell some stories with that data as you're trying to do Nanette, like what, what does water quality look like over that period of time? And, and where do we see dips and spikes in certain chemical parameters or nutrients? And can we tie that back to real events? You know, here we've had the biggest fire season um, in Colorado's history in quite a while. Hopefully it will remain at kind of a peak but what's the influence on the chemistry and the nutrients and sedimentation and turbidity? We try to kind of evaluate that. And again, baseline data is so important so that when something happens, we're able to say that's, that's unusual or that's, that's against our background. And having this data and starting to tell these stories with these graphs is really important. So it's something we've, as a program, we've wanted to do for decades and we're really making that happen and it's efforts like Anna's to go through every macroinvertebrate sample that's been collected in all of the South Palat and Colorado basins and really dial in and tell unique stories. What's the taxa richness? Um, what is the percent of mayflies and stoneflies and caddisflies, um, which you're putting on the end of your fly line to catch that big trout? Like, how do those compare to black fly and what, what inferences can we make to, to water quality? So that's a big effort that Riverwatch will continue to plug away at because you guys all continue to collect samples. So those are living, breathing and growing documents. Um, but we're trying to build a baseline of, of what these rivers look like right now. There was a question, a good question. Do we have any data for rivers that have been affected by the New Zealand, New Zealand mud snails? And not that I know of, um, Megan, Michaela, do you, do you know if we've we had actually, any data? We actually do. Um, we do. So two sites that we have, um, one was collected by Cutthroat um, Trout Unlimited Chapter. And I think it was either in, um, on, at their Lone, Lone Rock site, maybe, on the South Platte. Um, they found some there. And then also um, Cheyenne Creek Conservation David Ike's group in um, Colorado Springs found some in Cheyenne Creek. So that's kind of cool that they found those because what happens is we get notified and then we're able to notify the CPW biologists in that area and then they can go out and, and do their own sampling. And um, uh, so then we also have water data to go with that sampling that everybody's doing. So it's kind of cool that that's, that works for us. Those are the only two I can think of. Cool. Good question. <laughs> yeah, great question. Um, does anyone else have any other questions for us? It could be for Anna. It could be about Riverwatch updates. Anything? I just wanted to make a comment on Michaela's bulletin board. I, I don't, I don't know how you keep track of all that stuff up there. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's like a, uh, it's a collage or like a museum of, of Riverwatch history. I think is, is what it is. It it's is more, like, it's more of a background of decoration. I think it is. It's like every time, like people don't realize, like they send us um, samples and stuff, and Bradley, yours is going to start looking like that. And that's ninety percent of that <laughs> is things that people have sent with their samples. So little news articles. There's some notes. There's some cards. Kind of great. I like it. 
It's kind of the opposite of Michaela. She's so organized, right? Like you ask that question, where have mud snails been found? And she can tell you what station, what year. We very fondly call her like the rain man of Riverwatch data. It's incredible. Like <laughs> Nanette, you're, I'm gonna test Michaela. What is your um, station number, Michaela? For Nanette, she's at Betty Ford Alpine. Betty Ford Alpine. Do you know the station yeah. number? It's not fair because she's brand new. I know my <laughs> station number because I wrote it yesterday. It's 4, 4.30. 4.30. <laughs> <was gonna> <laughs> if you want to nice. give me a second, yes. <laughs> and Michaela would know that. Okay, what, what's Jeff's site longest sample, Michaela? He is station 27 and 28. And I believe that he is somewhere in the 400 and something. He might have been, he might have even been past 450 samples at one site at his Johnson Village site. So that's yeah. pretty cool. He's been sampling since 1991. Crazy. If you ever have a question, Michaela's the person to ask. She's Just the Riverwatch Encyclopedia. She is the Riverwatch Encyclopedia. Any yeah. other questions for us? All right, I'll, I wanna share this video from Roaring Fork that I mentioned earlier. It's, it's two minutes long, um, if you guys wouldn't mind. And if it's anybody really, needs to hop off, we totally understand and appreciate. Yeah, you. yeah, definitely. And I think there's a couple PG-13 words in here. Um, so if you have any kids around, can you guys hear that? You're, you've got your, your headphones in, Bradley, so we can't hear. Is there amazing sound with it too, Bradley, that maybe I just can't hear? That's so incredible that they captured the start of this flow. Did you guys see the beaver at the beginning? No. So that's basically it, but I'll go back to the very beginning just so you can see a beaver. Is that the beaver swimming on the left hand side? No, it's right here. Oh my gosh. Oh no. That poor beaver. I hope no beavers were harmed. <laughs> In the making of this film. I'm so sad now. <laughs> it doesn't look good, does it? Bradley, is this on the frying pan or the roaring fork? This was the uh, roaring fork. Wow. Yeah, isn't that incredible? The the be I'm I'm hoping the beaver is okay too, but he's just going for a little ride, like a little surfing down the river. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to share that because I thought it was really cool. Um, and if no one else had any questions, um, I think we're about ready to to wrap this up. Unless Megan, Michaela, did you have anything else to add? Just thanks, Anna, and thank you, thank you to everybody who joined us today. Yeah, I thought it was a super neat kind of conglomerate of people that joined today. So thank you guys for coming and, and sharing kind of what river you like, where you work and all that. Um, and we appreciate it. And like I said, this is going to be recorded. So we'll be posting it afterwards if, if you wanted to share with anyone else. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, Nana. Bye, Karen. Bye. Thank you.